This Chinese tablet design lets you play the rumored NX concept today. There's a Chinese peripheral maker named Akun. Akun, maybe I said that wrong. And they have a gaming device. It's a tablet that has removable controllers with joy pads, up, down, left, right, A, B, um, X, Y, two circle pad joysticks, L and R buttons, and they are detachable. You can plug them into the tablet itself and you can get physical controllers on your tablet. The Morpheus X3 is what it's called. It's an Android based gaming tablet. It has dual 2.4 gigahertz wireless controllers that magnetically strap onto the sides of it, an 8 megapixel rotating camera, and a built in HDMI out so that you can play games on the TV. Not much unlike the uh, last batches of rumors we've heard about the NX. This is pretty much the same thing, just a slightly bit different. And it does not have a graphics booster as rumored to be in the NX. The graphics booster would be something similar to what what laptops have these days where you can plug in an external GPU unit to your laptop and maybe your laptop has a 970 equivalent in it and then when you plug in the graphics unit it turns into like a 980 or you, you're using a Titan X or whatever and you're you just get a way better graphical frame rate experience when you have it plugged into the docking station so instead of it just being plugged into the TV and you're just seeing the tablet on the TV you're getting a much more clearer experience so it's not just 1080, it's uh, 1080 running at 60 frames on a, I don't know, 55 inch on a 4K TV. Who knows what Nintendo's going to do. But that is what this does. This just puts it out to the TV. There's nothing special in that. Now, it doesn't use cartridges though. So that's a little bit different. And it has a 128 gigabyte micro SD card in it. So you can download games from the Android store. Obviously, it's an Android device. They say they have a 4500 milliamp hour battery that lasts about about five hours, which means there's not so great battery optimization in it. Uh, the, again, I, I, I mean, you have phone, cell phones these days with 2,000 to 2,500 that last all day. Understandable that the screen is smaller, but this is just a basic gaming tablet. It's not, it's not anything special. This isn't the first device that has done this before, and uh, this device is priced at 300 US dollars. If you're interested in getting that, it not, not that much different from a console. Uh, unfortunately, I in the pictures I'm seeing here, I'm not seeing an actual docking station. The um, tablet is just shown as the X300 gaming console. Uh, it plugs into your TV using a 4K micro HDMI and uh, wireless gaming controllers up to 10 meters. I'm not saying that this is going to be a shoddy piece of garbage, but it does show a guy using two controllers separated and playing his games on the TV. Now, again, there is no docking station, though. It is just and I don't know, this picture is obviously a 3D rendering and the tablet is just standing up without like anything stopping it from falling over. I'm assuming you could easily just get something to hold the tablet up, but again, I need to emphasize this. This is not exactly what the Nintendo NX is planning to do. So it, it might be in concept for the tablet and the removable controllers, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that the controllers are probably gonna go together. When you detach them, you can put them together again and play them as a regular controller instead of having two separate controllers in your hands because that's very unergonomic. That's very hard to use. Um, a lot of people dislike the Wiimotes for that reason. You have to have it in your hand individually and you can't just have two hands on it unless you hold it sideways. So yeah, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested in getting like maybe half of the NX experience before it comes out, there you go. You can buy a Chinese knockoff tablet. That's $300. I, I don't know if it'd be worth the money. I haven't seen seen it demoed, I haven't seen it playing video games, and the games that would be compatible with the controllers probably are far and few between. There's millions of games on the marketplace, how many of them actually use specified, dedicated, separate controls besides a touchscreen? There's only a handful. So would it be worth the money? Probably not, since you play those games with just a regular dedicated Bluetooth controller anyways. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have yourselves a great day. I've been your host, Proto Mario, and I'm signing out, as always, good gaming and God bless. Thanks for watching.